on terror is a bunch of wood. Just a poor excuse for you to use up on your bullets. How much money does it take to really make a full clip? 9 11 building 7, did they really pull it? Uh, and a bunch of other cover ups. Your child's future was the first to go with budget cuts. If you think that hurts, then wait, here comes the uppercut. The school was garbage in the first place. That's on the up and up. Keep you at the bottom, but tease you with the upper crust. You get it, then they move it, so you never keeping up enough. If you turn on TV, all you see is a bunch of what the f dude is dating so and so. Blabbering about such and such, and that ain't Jersey Shore. Homie, that's the news. And these the same people supposedly telling us the truth. Limbo is a racist. Glenn Beck is a racist. Gaza Strip was getting bombed. Obama didn't say. That's why I ain't vote for him. Next one either. I'm a part of the problem. My problem is I'm peaceful. And I believe in the people. Yeah. It's so Fear is such a weak emotion, that's why I despise it We scared of almost everything, afraid to even tell the truth So scared of what you think of me, I'm scared of even telling you Sometimes I'm like the only person I feel safe to tell it to I'm locked inside a cell in me, I know that there's a gel in you Consider this your belling out, so take a breath and hell a few My screams is finally getting free, my thoughts it's is finally so yelling down For my people in your math You forced us in the ghetto And then you took our dads The belly of the beast These streets are demons' abs I'm telling you that set up in them sit-ups is so sad The system is a slab Corruption is the swanger Sitting high, riding dirty Drag racing in the danger And it's so clean Pine trees smelling good We work off in the trunk And niggas in the hood So I can't shed blood on any battlefield of yours I pray the ugly truth comes and shatters as your decor and as it all falls down in tatters on the floor i shed tears i don't know what really matters anymore cause i don't know what really matters Now, as 
as I wander through the city going mad. I see the fruits of planting evidence instead of grass. A swindled generation with no patience full of swag. Man, they so impatient with the stations that they have. As long as they look good when they be doing bad. And the separation from the truth is getting vast, fast. Be a slave at first or free at last. Double-edged choices make a nigga want to pass. Double-headed voices from the eagle on the staff. The pyramid where ice will split the spirited in half. Divided over money, delighted by the dummy and down of the importance of crowns we'll never have. That's why my sounds and sermons are so full of wrath. Baptize your mind, let your brain take a bath. Swim inside the river, get delivered from the craft. For the witches in this business that be living off your sad. Hating on your happiness, you hit them off with laughs. Smile till they surrender, then you kill them off with glad. Hello, Eve. Bobby's on the floor, so baby, we should go and add some more. Are you down, did it down, did it down, did it down, down, down? Down, did it down, did it down, did it down, down, down? Everywhere I look are people's hands, thrown up in the air to help them dance. Come on, baby, catch me if you can. I know you don't have any other plans. Are you down, did it down, did it down? Down, are you 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 down, are
the heavens no man no weapon formed against yes glory is destined everyday women and men become legends sins that go against our skin become blessings the movement is a rhythm to us freedom is like religion to us justice is juxtaposition in us justice for all just ain't specific enough one son died the spirit is revisiting us true and living living in us resistance is us that's why rosa sat on the bus that's why we walk through Ferguson with our hands up. When it go down, we woman and man up. They say stay down, and we stand up. Shots, we on the ground, the camera panned up. King pointed to the mountaintop, and we ran up. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours. It will be ours. Oh, one day, when the war is won. We will be sure, we will be sure, oh, no. Every man, woman, and child. Even Jesus got his crown in front of a crowd. They march with the torch. We gon' run with it now. Never look back. We done gone hundreds of miles from dark roads, heroes to become a hero. Facing the league of justice, his power was the people. Enemy is lethal. A king became regal. Saw the face of Jim Crow under a bald ego. The biggest weapon. It's to stay peaceful, we sing. Our music is the cuts that we bleed through. Somewhere in the dream we had an epiphany. Now we right the wrongs in history. No one can win the war individually. It take the wisdom of the elders and young people's energy. Welcome to the story we call victory. The coming of the Lord, my eyes have seen the glory. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be When the night has come And the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid Oh, I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand Stand by me so darling, darling, stand by me, oh, stand by me, oh, stand, stand. 
should tumble and fall Or the mountain should crumble to the sea I won't cry, I won't cry No, I won't shed a tear Just as long as you stand, stand by me I'm the director of student support here at the school. My job is to help teachers to create communities of classrooms and learners that um, where kids feel supported and kids feel like they're able to take academic risks and that kids are feeling like they are receiving the, the support that they need to be successful in school. I do that by my number one job is by supporting teachers as they work to create those environments and, to, and together collectively we as we build a school that allows for kids to be able to have success later in life through successful academic experiences. What do you try to do to like build a school that way, right? Where the kids can feel comfortable, where the teachers can feel comfortable? So on a day-to-day -day basis, that, that can look like um, creating plans for, for students along with the rest of the team. Um, that can be IEP plans, that can be um, 504s, that can be um, making sure supports for language learners and school and emotional supports are put into place, um, that medically that students are in a good place. How are you? Good. You ready for the day? Mm -hmm. Do you have your lanyard? How's the knee? It's okay. It's feeling better? Sure. That they are able to um, be successful in school. Um, for supports as we build the school, um, a strong um, commitment to social emotional learning um, and supporting teachers as they, as they um, integrate some of those social emotion, emotional uh, learning strategies into the classroom. Um, so the school is, has committed um, a significant amount of time and money towards um, to, to building um, some, some evidence-based professional development um, specifically for um, urban communities and urban schools to help students um, regulate in the classroom and, um, and for communities of classrooms to be created for kids to take academic risks. Do you think there's anything like in particular that an urban school may need to maybe help, I'm just gonna say, level the playing fields, right? Because I think about schools and districts that just have more socio a higher socioeconomic status and I believe that they tend to do better um, just standardized score wise. And then I think about urban districts that may not have as much income coming in from the community, so they have a lower school budget. Like, what do you think an urban school needs to be just as successful as a Newton or a Somerville or something like that? I know that may be a difficult question. Yeah, no, and I don't think you can, we can lump all urban or all suburban schools together. Um, I can speak specifically for our community. Um, I think one of the things for our community, um, and our, which happens to be an urban community, is, um, is it, it really is a, so two things. I think it, it really is very much about, certainly it's about the student, and um, for a student to be successful, it certainly takes a team of people to, to um, to help that student find success later in life. And that, that starts at home and that starts with the parent as well. So, you know, I think um, greater um, community, communi schools becoming more of a community rather than a place where kids go um, is, is vital, particularly in our urban community. Um, so many times um, our parents, especially at our middle school, our parents are not that far, the age of our parents is not that far removed from um, a potentially negative school ex prior school experience that they have. So 
um, you know, and really making sure that kids, their kids' experiences um, don't mirror sometimes a, a potentially negative previous school experience that a parent might have had, but then also um, um, having, the, having the convincing parents that, um, that this is something different and really communicating with parents that, they, that their input is just as important as anything that would be in the school. Agree hundred percent, right? Yeah, they spend half their day here, half their day at home, and that's building how they feel. Thank you for sharing that. So I have one other question, sure. and the question was, um, what do you believe <laughs> about students, teachers, and schools? I think it all starts with education. So I think um, students, teachers, and schools all speak to um, education, right? So I think I think students, teachers, and schools are all the ticket to. Um, this community, well, this immediately the school, but then this community, this country, really, um, you know, being being great, and, you know, being a leader in a, a global economy, but a shrinking global economy. Um, so I, I think I think it starts at the student level, and it, it really is has to be student centered. Um, I think any decisions that we make, we we always ask what's best for kids and what what makes the best sense for kids. Um, so I think students, what do I believe about students, teachers, and schools? I think it's all about the students. It starts with teachers and schools, and, and I would add parents in that too. Um, I think everything that we do as a, the adults in life and as a community, it has to focus on students. Um, I think the sky is truly the limit um, when, when that happens. Um, uh, and I, I think that there is no, um, no ceiling for what 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 kids are able to do as I look at the title of this book it's it's about the crisis in urban education do you think that there is a crisis in urban education why I joined the charter school is because I want to be part of part of that change to, to kind of make education really really where what it should be at least in this community and for our scholars here at the school one piece of advice someone gave me one time to improve my practice was develop relationships with kids what one piece of feedback would you give me? You've known me for a few months. That would be the biggest one. I, I think that for, I mean, for you or for any educator, <laughs> I, I, I cannot echo that enough. Um, I think the, you know, the biggest thing, particularly in, in um, for scholars who have experienced trauma or for scholars who, um, who may not um, value education or come from a home that values education or, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is that the relationships with the with the adults in school are are probably I would say one of the biggest um, factors for success. Um, I, I cannot emphasize that enough. That was always my belief as a teacher. That was always my belief as a as an administrator. Um, I it 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 always starts with relationships with kids. So that that would hundred and fifty percent echo exactly what that previous person said to you. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess like how I do my job is I kind of go into the first day understanding that I don't know much in terms of my scholars. And from there, it's my job to kind of assess where they're at emotionally, socially, academically. And then I need to be responsive in the way that I handle um, the knowledge that I gain. So if I notice that they have academic gaps, I try and figure out scaffolds, accommodations, ways to work with those academic gaps and start to close those. If emotionally I see that, um, you know, maybe they need some support with social interactions or interactions with teachers, I try and take the time to find out strategies and collaborate with my colleagues and figure out wait, what is the best way that we can support our kids um, in terms of that. Uh, and then, you know, it's pretty much going from big picture into the day to day, like what are those, what are the, what's the checklist that I need to do, what's the to-do list that I need to do to ensure that my kids are progressing academically, emotionally, and socially. Um, and that could be anything from giving a kid a multiplication chart to um, working with the student adjustment counselor to create a behavior tracker um, to make sure that our kids can access the class on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, yeah. 
That's awesome. I think it's powerful you tied in the S-E-L in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second question is, uh, what do you believe about today's students, teachers, and schools? What do I believe? About I mean, I believe anything that I see, right? So I think whatever you experience, whatever you hear from your colleagues is what you in turn believe. It's what you internalize and I mean, it's just, I believe reality. So I just believe what I see on a day-to-day -day basis and what I hear, um, what I hear from my kids, their home lives, what I see them capable of doing. So academically, what I believe is that if you provide the kids the right scaffolds and accommodations and you work with them and you're patient, you will see progress. I do believe that no matter if the kid has a disability, if they don't, whatever their background, whatever their socioeconomic status is, um, I believe that my job is impactful. I believe it's important and I believe that it cannot be done unless you have a community that is strong, you know, and where you have the resources in order to do so. So going off of that, I also believe that, um, and I don't know if this is a tangent, but I believe that our educational system has um, a lot of flaws in the U.S. at this point, and we need to do a lot of work to um, improve the experience for educators and students. There's just so much more that can, could be done, so I do believe that as well. If you could do one thing, what would you do in the many, many things that could be done? What do you think Like, was one thing that you would want to do? That I could control? That yeah. I could have, like, that something that I could do to improve the situation? To improve the American um, educational To improve experience. the Ameri American educational system. I think making people aware is extremely important because I know that I talk to my friends, I'll talk to my family members, and I might mention something like charter school, and they have a very specific perception of what a charter school might be. Um, so I think just having conversations with people and being open to hearing what people perceive or people's opinions and then being open to communicate um, your own experiences and that way you know hopefully that trickles over to a larger conversation and people feel more knowledgeable about the educational system as a whole you know because I can only speak from my experience but I mean, the more stories that you hear and the more experiences that you hear, the more aware you are and the more impact you can have on a global discussion. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Actual calendar on the Google? Yes, and me too. Just, just the other. Yes. Hi. Hello. So the first question is, how do I do my work? How do I do my work? I am very purposeful in thinking about the end product and what I want kids to actually be able to do and take into the real world and apply because otherwise if they can't see the connection to their lives and how they can use it outside of school then I feel like they will not be engaged to even start the lesson so it's really that end product and being a change agent that's why I left corporate America and why I decided to work with urban youth so that they can be the next generation that gets out of their current situation and really makes a difference. So I have that in mind for any and every lesson, whether it's vocab or a writing prompt, um, making those connections to the real world is very important. What would you say, I'm going off a different question here because you mentioned being a change agent mm -hmm. and I don't hear that very often. Right. I was fortunate that my master's program was all focused on that, that we're still teaching like 50s style teaching and not allowing students to find their voice and how to go about doing that. So that's kind of my goal in teaching, that I can make that difference in my classroom, but hopefully in you know, even just one other classroom in a school and eventually you know, an entire school and a movement that would be geared towards that because Currently, things are taught in isolation more so, I feel like. What tips would you give someone like me who's trying to do the same thing, right? Trying to be an agent of change and help my students uh, liberate themselves? Yeah, just uh, get their input. I mean, I have a scholar that I meet with once a week that asked to meet with me and I get her feedback on ideas. Student input is so important. Like, hey, 
this is the topic that we have to learn. I want you guys to think over the weekend, how could we make this more engaging, more exciting for you? Um, how would, like giving choice in as many ways as possible, but having them have a really big say, not like little things, but what do you want your end product to look like? Um, like we do an activism fair, I did it at my old school, we're gonna do it here, but they get to choose what topic they were most passionate about this year, but not just informing others of what the topic is, but okay, so what are you gonna do to make change? So it's a, giving them that mindset and that language of, so what, now what? So, wow. like really taking it beyond like a test or a poster, but how are you really going to take it to the next level? And then showing them examples of people that do that in the real world. So, and people that look like them, not just old white guys and naming for them who has control in society and who makes choices right now so that they can see that and say, oh, you're right, I don't see myself in most of these books on our shelves, or I don't see myself in these television shows. Like all of those things you're doing in class, they can make connections with and like apply everything they're learning in school outside of school. That was really a lot of things wrapped into one, but I'd say giving them a lot of choice and doing topics that are really relevant to them and exciting. So hands-on things in STEM, I know they love ELA, it's controversial topics, school shootings, like nobody, teachers are not comfortable talking about those things and talking about race relations and institutionalized racism. And so giving them that safe space to talk about it and to educate themselves will empower them to then do something about it. But it's like um, a very hush-hush thing and I think it's because people feel uncomfortable, especially people that are white that are teachers, like talking about race and like that they are privileged and kind of unpacking that with kids is really important. So being a white teacher yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel uncomfortable having those conversations? I did when I first started, like my master's program, it was like, all the time it was being pushed on like that, to have those conversations that I'd never even thought about before because I was so privileged like oh I never thought about you know the fact that I never even met anyone of color until I went to junior high wow. and all my teachers were white and then it gets you thinking and then you look at society in a very different way and even just the text that we read to our kids and that we put in front of them um, really making that change on your own too like what am I gonna bring into my library for my kids to read or how am I gonna pose this problem to them, this math problem. Um, it just makes you um, a more aware teacher and more purposeful in your planning and your delivery. But getting kids feedback is so important too on top of that, but making it known, like I know I am white and privileged and I cannot relate on many levels, but I am trying to change that for you guys. And yeah, I think naming it, but it's really hard at first. and. I think a lot of teachers think, oh yeah, I'm gonna do social justice stuff, like I love that. And then they like sprinkle in a lesson here or there, but it's really something that you need to be purposeful about all the time. It doesn't need to be a topic on race relations in ELA. It can be any lesson or any math lesson and how you can integrate kind of multiple perspectives. Um, yeah, just by having those things in mind and being really cognizant of what you bring to the table and what your kids bring to the table. Wow, that's a very thoughtful response. Thanks for that. We do have one more question, but we'll talk about it another time. Sounds still doing that one from earlier.